Well, hey there, campers, and welcome back to another episode of Camp Cryptid. It's your host, Erica Fett, and this week we are back for an amazing episode, which is the Halloween special. Like, insert all the applause and claps and cheers. Um, I'm very excited for the Halloween special because it's that perfect time of year where it's getting fall time. It's a little snuggly and cozy at night. Uh, put on some creepy movies and Halloween movies and horror movies and series and just kind of chill out while the leaves fall and you drink your apple cider. Uh, and this is my favorite time of year, uh, only because I, you know, give me a better reason to watch any horror movies than it being Halloween time, right? Uh, well, speaking of creepy ha Halloween type of uh, shows and series, uh, this this Halloween episode is actually going to be about my personal favorite cryptids and the scariest monsters that I think in the world. And I'm kind of going off of a Tubi documentary called The World's Scariest Monsters that I was actually on, where I talked all about zombies and Wendigo and I don't want to give away all the creepiest monsters, but if you love Tubi and you want to check that out, head over to Tubi. It's on, uh, basically, it should be on the featured area, and it's called The World's Scariest Monsters, and you'll see me having uh, fun nerding out over all of the monsters and cryptids of the world. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do my own little episode. Now, before I get into my absolute favorite monsters and cryptids in the world, uh, I'd like to thank everybody so much for stopping by New York Comic Con to the booth. Uh, I had a very special New York Comic Con episode for Camp Cryptid where I had on the first guest of ever, uh, who was Neptune, who is one of my good friends, a model, cosplayer. Uh, she kind of dabbles in everything, DJing. I mean, she's just kind of a wonder woman when it comes to that. But I had her on and I'm so excited for the future with all the fun guests we have planned. I have guests up until like April planned, so <laughs> I have a lot of fun goodies in store for everyone. Um, but I just want to thank everyone so much for stopping by New York Comic Con in the booth, grabbing some stickers, saying hi, uh, hearing everybody excited about all the past episodes really honestly makes my day and it just makes me like the happiest little camper ever because it makes me happy that we can all nerd out over monsters and scary stories and horror and sci-fi and everything in between and that honestly is, it brightens my day so much. Um, so yes, thank you so much to everybody for New York Comic Con. I really hope you all enjoyed the New York Comic Con episode all about anime and horror. And uh, we're hoping to really uh, dive back into another episode with Neptune coming in the future. So if you all have any ideas of things that you'd like to see Neptune and I talk about on our future episode, you just let me know. Um, but that being said, we're going to we're going to hop on into our Halloween episode and get all the creepy goodness uh, in this episode. And I can't wait. Uh, so yeah, The Scariest Cryptids and Monsters in the World, the documentary that was on Tubi, was really fun to do. I, I think I recorded that back in February or March uh, of twenty this year, 2023, and I've been waiting so patiently for it to come out because I was like, I want to know which which little scenes they, they took from me talking about all of these monsters and cryptids. And I was so excited that, first off, I was so excited to talk about zombies. And you know me being the total vampire girl that I am. I, you know, anytime I get to talk about vampires, I am like here for it. Um, so that was really, really fun to, you know, sit down and talk about interview with vampire, all my favorite, all my favorite vampire Felix. And um, just being able to nerd out over all of these creatures that are all over the world. I, I was just, you know, it was like some of them I never even had like heard of prior to that. So doing the research and really getting able to dive, uh, being able to dive into, you know, these cryptids and, and monsters was so much fun. So I thought, hey, what better way than to kick off Halloween than to talk about my personal favorites of, of horror um, and my favorite monsters and my favorite cryptids in the world. Uh, and I was so excited uh, just to sit down and like chit chat about it. So um, I guess I'll dive right in. <laughs> So one of the uh, one of the scariest cryptids, in my opinion, would definitely be the Wendigo. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Wendigo, it is a, a spirit that is said to haunt kind of the forests and, and all of Earth, really. Um, and it, it preys on those that are greedy and corrupt and selfish. And I thought, you know, you, you add in all of these scary emotions and, and creepy 
creepy characteristics of someone and then you throw in the fact that it could be a cannibalistic type of creature um you know knock me out of the park i like i am <laughs> no thank you anything with cannibals or anything that's eating another like i am like okay that that is too creepy i am i am just not i'm i'm just terrified of it and then you add in the fact that it could happen, you know, in isolated places when it's cold out or freezing and there's snowstorms. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, like people like to think that the Donner Party uh, that was traveling through the Sierra Nevada region um, back in the day uh, was was inflicted by Wendigo spirits. And uh, there's a really good movie that actually has like a kind of a hint of Wendigo and it's the movie Ravenous. And I think it came out in like the 90s. Uh, but that movie back in the day, I didn't really realize that it was like a Wendigo type of movie, but it is honestly, it's probably one of my favorite of those types of movies because, you know, the Wendigo doesn't really get a lot of love these days. Uh, I know there's a movie Antlers that's out um, and there's maybe, I think there is one on Tubi or Shutter called Wendigo that's actually pretty enjoyable, but for the most part, it's one of those uh, creatures and cryptids that's not really uh, talked about a lot. And maybe that's because they think that if you do end up talking talking about it, uh, it will follow you. So uh, we're not going to try to mention it a lot, <laughs> as I've mentioned it four times. <laughs> but uh, so that is one of my favorites. And we also talked about it a little bit in the Tubi documentary too. So if you wanted to hear a little bit more about some lore and more movies that it's featured in, definitely check that out. But I thought for sure that was one that definitely made my list today just because it is so creepy. And the way that they depict it is like this almost like tall, like eight foot to nine foot giant type of creature that has like antlers. So you throw that out in the middle of like the woods, in the middle of the isolated like snowstorm, and you've got this creature that could make you a can't, like I'm just, I'm gonna pass on that. <laughs> I'm just gonna pass on that. Uh, so that was one of my favorites. I had to mention the Wendigo today just because it was, honestly, it's one of the creepiest cryptids in my opinion. Now, you also add in, uh, when it comes to the forest, you know, we've got the Dogman. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Dogman, it's, it's basically a werewolf. And uh, you've got those sightings all over the world. You've got them in the, the, the Southern America. You've got, them in, you've got them all over the United States. You've got them in Australia. You've got them all over. And, and I think that's really kind of a cool thing is that you've got all these sightings of this werewolf. And, you know, who wants to come into contact with a werewolf? I do not. <laughs> so um, I love that. But I also love that the forest is also a uh, home to, you know, Bigfoot. When you think about Bigfoot, there's a lot of like theories out there about what Bigfoot could be, right? They they say that Bigfoot could be interdimensional and it can and it can basically disappear and jump dimensions. Uh which, you know, why not? Why not? Uh, and then there's other people who believe that the Bigfoot could be, you know, obviously like a, an ape type of bipedal creature. Uh, and then there's people who believe it could be like a, a mix between a Neanderthal uh, and is just kind of like living off the grid because, you know, as, you know, Neanderthal were kind of pushed out, they kind of had to go further into the caves that they used to live in. So I think there's a lot of good theories on what the Bigfoot could be. But, but you know, when it comes down to it, we still don't have that solid evidence of what the Bigfoot really honestly is. Because it could be a mixture of all these things that people have been seeing over, you know, decades now. It could have been a person that was living off the grid and just had long hair. It could have been just, you know, someone saw a, uh, a, a black bear standing up on its two feet so, and at two feet and walking. We just really don't know um, exactly what explanation for each exact sighting. So I think it's kind of fun, you know, when you think about Bigfoot and kind of theorize what it could be. I think that's what adds to the elusiveness of it is that it could be so many things, but it could also be this cryptid creature that we haven't ever, you know, come across or um, even researched. So I think that that is really fun about Bigfoot. Now, I was talking in a previous episode about how, um, you know, if you're out in the middle of the wilderness and you come across a Bigfoot, it's probably going to be scary, right? Because you've got this giant creature. You don't know if it is, if it's tame or if it's ravenous. And I think that the, I think that's what kind of adds a little bit of, you know, um, 
a scary vibe to Bigfoot. Uh, for those of you who have seen like Willow Creek um, and the movie exists, those are two of my absolute favorites um, and Big Legend. I actually did a video on YouTube, on my own personal YouTube, where I talked about my top five big, favorite Bigfoot movies. And uh, those are definitely still some of my top Bigfoot movies ever. Uh, the movie Exists is on there. I love Exist. It's an amazing um, found footage type of film. And it's it's just it's such a good movie. It's after you go through and watch it and you realize what's happening, it's kind of hard to go back through and rewatch it because you're like, oh no. Um, but it's really, really great. And uh, the movie uh, Willow Creek is also the same. And to me, Willow Creek is so fantastic because it's actually in the spot where, um, you know, there's a lot of Bigfoot lore. So they kind of threw in that in there. And I just, I just love that about that film. Now you add in the movie, uh, The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. Sounds ridiculous, but honestly, I love that movie. I think it's a great story. I think, it, you know, it, what a way to pull off two things like that. And it just, it's just one of my favorites. And then the movie Big Legend, which uh, is actually very like scary. It actually depicts Bigfoot in like this crazy, um, like crazy way. He's just like this crazy brute. Uh, which I think is kind of honestly the way that I would see Bigfoot. Uh, I would love for Bigfoot to be like the Harry and the Hendersons Bigfoot. I always say that like in a perfect world, Bigfoot would be like the perfect member of your household. Like he would, you know, take out the trash and hang out, do your hair, you know, you would have fun and hang out. But, you know, in the real reality, it's probably very sad and it's not so exciting and sweet. But <laughs> But yeah, so Bigfoot definitely makes my list of honorable mentions for World Scariest Cryptids only because we don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> so um, now with every episode, I always say, please go out and like, if you're inspired by a cryptid that you hear or a movie, please go out and do your own research. And, you know, hopefully you have, uh, you know, amazing literature and books that you can read and movies and documentaries and hopefully that inspires you to go out and do a cryptid hunt and maybe find these elusive creatures that we're talking about today. Plus I always love it because there are so many different types of books and magazines and articles all about all of these cryptids and in a perfect world I would be able to read them all all day all night every day of my life but unfortunately there's just so much out there so that's why I always say hey go go jump into the cryptid research. I am here for it. I co-sign it. I am I am always down for hearing about cryptid stories or if you find something cool, please send it my way because I love this stuff. I love monsters. I love thinking that this world has so many cool things that we haven't seen yet. And I think that's what adds to the fun of it, right? I mean, that's why I think we are all so addicted to monsters and addicted to, you know, horror and sci-fi because we're humans. We're curious. We want to know, right? And I think that's also a beautiful thing, um, you know, being human and being curious. So um, now I talked about the Wendigo. I talked about the Bigfoot. So now I'm going to get into my absolute favorite cryptids ever. And I, I'm such a nerd when it comes to this, but I love the Mongolian death worm. The Mongolian death worm is probably to me one of the coolest cryptids. And I just think it's because it is such like a strange little, little guy, but you know, there's just something so cool about it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Mongolian death worm, it's basically this uh, worm that is almost like a snake-like uh, worm. It resembles a red bloody intestine. Uh, Accounts of it say that it can get up to five feet, uh, but people say it ranges between two to five feet. Now, it, there was a book in the 1900s, early 1900s, uh, on the Trail of Ancient Man, I believe, and it talked about people's sightings of the Mongolian death worm. And according to people's accounts of this, this treacherous little cryptid, um, it basically say that, that people said that it can electrify you uh, if you touch it you'll die instantly. It spits venom and it basically hangs out under the sand and basically almost like the movie Dune. You imagine it's not as giant as obviously the, the giant Dune worm, but it's basically like a, a smaller version of that. So it hangs out and under the, the sands and you can see it make ripples under the sands. There are some accounts that say that it only used to come out when it was raining in the region, which since it's a desert, it's pretty arid. So you're not going to get much rain these days. But it could be there lurking under the sand. And I think that's really, really cool. So 
there are people who say, okay, no, it's not a death worm. It's nothing like that. It could be like a legless li lizard or a sand boa or some other type of snake that people are seeing. Because there are snakes in the region that do have colorations that are like a little bit more red orange. Oh my cat's Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You gonna hang out? <laughs> so the cool thing is, is that even though people think it might be a sand boa, we don't really know for sure if it if what they're seeing was actually a snake. So a lot of people say that in the region, basically, they thought that the Gobi Desert was once underwater. And the reason that researchers believe that is because they were finding shells and coral and other traces that the Gobi Desert was once underwater. Um, now, that people could have brought those things from, you know, the coastline and dropped them there, you know. But researchers do believe that at one time the Gobi was at on the seafloor. So that got my little head rolling because if you've ever had a saltwater aquarium, you know that like if you pull in any type of rock or if you pull in any type of um, sand, sometimes out of nowhere, it will seem like you'll get these little worms like bristle worms and fire worms. And those things are the fire worms can be so awful for your saltwater tank. Uh, and it just got me thinking like, wow, these little worms exist in the ocean and they hide at the bottom of, you know, in rocks and at the bottom under a sand. So why, you know, why couldn't that translate to the Gobi Desert with the Mongolian death worm, right? So now I just really want to go to the, like basically to the Gobi and just drop a bunch of water and see if any of these little worms pop up, you know? <laughs> and then, um, you know, it got me on, you know, patterns of other types of worms. You know, you've got the bobbit worm that's on the ocean floor. And if you have not seen the bobbit worm, holy cow, you are in for a nightmare. Please go Google the bobbit worm. It is, it is this, it, I mean, it looks really cool because it's like iridescent, <laughs> but like, honestly, it is terrifying. And that's just in my mind. What I see when I think of the Mongolian death worm is this like little thing that comes out of the, oh my gosh, it's awful. But then you also, not only do you have the bobbit worm, you've also got like giant beach worms that are in the, the sands of the South Australian beaches. Um, and I never even realized that those existed until I was doing the research on the Mongolian death worm and like other, kind of like other worms that kind of have the same, like similar type of um, behavior, right? And they basically show like videos where you can take like dead fish and like kind of rub them along the beaches. And then this little worm comes out and you're like, okay, no, how do people walk barefoot anywhere there? I, I it just freaked me out. So that's why I was like, there's got to be something like that right in the desert. There's got to be some kind of sandworms. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to go on and say, I think there's, I definitely do think there's some kind of like sandworm in the desert. And I, I honestly, I'm here for it. I like all the creepy stuff. I don't really see myself going to the Gobi Desert anytime soon to go find it, but hey, maybe one day I'll take an expedition, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, you know, the Mongolian death worm is just a really cool uh, concept of a, um, a cryptid. You know, if you think you've got this like almost like intestine looking bloody worm that gets up to five feet that's coming out at you and then it spits venom at you and it electrifies you. I mean, who came up with these details? I mean, they're great. I love them. Uh, but, you know, it just reminds me of like lampreys in, in, in the Great Lakes. And I just, I man, I, I really want to get... Uh, diver certified. So that's my deep sea certification is like the one thing I want to get. And all I kept seeing is people talking about like, okay, well, divers need to be careful for the bobbit worms and all these things. And I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I should, maybe I, maybe I don't know if I'm, I'm ready for this. <laughs> but hey, it's okay. We're going to dive into it literally. And <laughs> we're going to be a-okay. Um, but yeah, so 100% absolutely am down with the Mongolian death worm. To me, it is one of the coolest and most terrifying cryptids that I think exists. Now, feel free to go do your own research. I, I will welcome any type of books or articles you all send my way on it. And if you find something cool, or hey, maybe one of you is inspired to go to the Gobi now and you wanna go be, you know, do an expedition there and find it, you know what? I will be cheering you on. I will be your hype team and Let's find that Mongolian death worm. <laughs> now, on the opposite end of the desert, uh, I really wanted to talk about another cool ass cryptid that I think is personally absolutely horrifying. 
And to me, it's got to be the Kraken, right? It's got to be like the the giant sea creatures that are lurking under these depths that uh, we can't even possibly fathom to even going and traveling to. And I think that, you know, the sea has always been something that has mystified humans um, since the beginning of time. You know, we've always wanted to explore it and yet we have only explored so little of it. So there's so much we do not know and so many species and so many plants and so many different organisms that we still don't even know exist. Um, which I think is so fantastic and what leads to this world being so crazy and so mysterious and so awesome. And honestly, when you think about a giant kraken or a giant squid hanging out, like that's the stuff of nightmares. So, you know, there's some people who think the kraken is like, um, like almost like the clash of the titans, like almost like a walking uh, type of sea monster, which is cool. Me, I personally think of the Kraken as like a giant squid. So we do know as humans, a giant squid do exist. We just really don't know how big they get. There have been obviously time, uh, there have been times where people have caught it on camera. I know in Japan, they had this amazing footage. I'll post it in the, uh, the Reddit for Camp Cryptid. Um, I'll post a video because they found this footage of this giant squid that was just roam in the waters. So we do know that they exist. We just don't know how big these suckers get, which I think is actually pretty terrifying. You know, we've got all of these stories over since the beginning of time. I think Aristotle wrote about uh, squid, right? We've got, you know, artists who have drawn um, like sperm whales being attacked by squid. We've got people who have boats being capsized by a giant squid. And then we've got the actual stories of attacks from giant squid, which to me, Oh God, these poor, I could not imagine how terrifying that would be to see a giant tentacle come up on the side of your boat and just, no, terrifying. So three of the sightings that I wanted to talk about today about the giant squid were uh, in 1930s, uh, there was a Norwegian boat called the Brunswick and people on the boat basically had an account of three different times that they were attacked by a giant squid. Now, unfortunately for the squid, it couldn't latch onto the boat properly. And every time uh, that a, a squid came up and tried to attack it, it was actually um, kind of, um, it fell in the propeller. So we don't like that story because that's kind of sad, but I mean, good for the good for the sailors, right? But there was a boat called the Brunswick and it was attacked numerous times. So definitely check that out if you want to learn about that one. Uh, it's pretty creepy uh, how people told their accounts of what happened. And then there was also in World War II a boat that was uh, destroyed. And so the people, including uh, Captain or Lieutenant Cox, were on a raft. Now in this raft, they were, they were floating along and they were actually attacked by a giant squid. Uh, people were taken off of the raft and pulled down. And the Lieutenant Cox, who was a survivor, actually was attacked by the squid with its um, its tentacle and the hooks and suction cups on it ended up ripping off his skin and he had scars from the entire, uh, from on his leg from the attack. So if you think about how awful the squid is, if, if you aren't aware of how creepy those organisms are, they have a giant beak in the middle of their dome that just looks terrifying first off. And then they've got these giant tentacles with suction cups that have hooks and little like little uh, edges in them that can rip off your skin. So you add the fact that it's this giant organism in the water, you add the fact that it's like this killing machine and it's just, to me, it's terrifying. So definitely look up uh, Lieutenant Cox if you want to find out more about that attack. Now, also one of the most recent uh, attacks that I would like to talk about is the USS Stein from 1978. This was over a 400 foot boat uh, that the Navy had. And when they realized that their sonar was messed up, they went into the pier and then they did a checkout and they realized that part of their coating was ripped off and had it was like basically torn to shreds. And um, when they found large gashes, which they said were like four feet long, uh, they found like the little hooks from the actual tentacles in the gashes. Uh, now, when they sent the hook away to be uh, the claw away to be, um, you know, uh, analyzed, they the researchers of the claw basically said that it could be from a squid, a giant squid that was up to 150 feet in length. Now, 
150 feet is a lot. And I'll have to post like the, the, the picture of like the actual USS Stein and then show the diagram of how big this squid would have been. And it is honestly, it's, it's, it's nightmare inducing. <laughs> Everything about it makes me just feel so uncomfortable. Like, oh man, well, maybe I won't be going deep sea diving next year because <laughs> I would be the one person that gets attacked by a giant squid. Let's be real. Um, but to me, that is the stuff of nightmares because there's so much we do not know about our ocean. And then you add in the fact that there's these giant squids who are just ripping people off of life rafts and ripping people off of boats and just taking them down into the depths. That is awful. But then it also kind of adds a little bit of realism to some of these older um, paintings that you'd see depicted of like cracking coming out of the water and tearing down some of these wooden boats that they used to use back in like the 17, uh, 1700s. Uh, and it just adds like this whole sense of like, wow, these people were actually really brave going out there on the water. <laughs> so brave, um, especially when they really truly believe that a Kraken could be there at any corner of their, their leg of their journey. So I think that that's pretty cool when you think about how terrifying a giant squid would actually be. And these were some of my, and now there are tons when I, when I say I just read three of them because I wanted to kind of give it like a good idea of like giant boats that were affected by giant squid and kraken. Um, there are so many other stories of people being affected. There are so many other sightings of people who have seen these giant squid come out of the water. Uh, and so definitely go dive into some giant squids and kraken lore. Um, send me all the, the, the links and books and articles you find because... I need to be more up to date on my Kraken research, but definitely 100% the Kraken slash giant squid is at the top of my most terrifying creatures and cryptids of the world. Um, now with an honorable mention, I have to say the Megalodon, you know, I, I they found a Megalodon tooth that was like seven inches. So they think that it could have been like a 50 foot shark. To me, I think that's really cool. I think sharks are really cool. You know, they're just giant fish with big old teeth, you know, hanging around, you know. And even though they they may eat people, um, they're still cool fish. And thinking about a giant, massive megalodon in the water just lurking, I mean, that's so cool. I just think that the, the ocean is such a crazy, cool place. And I really do wish that there was a way that humans could, like, find out more about our ocean without it being so, like, dangerous. But... I got to give the Megalodon a shout out for an honorable mention for being a cool cryptid because it is a cool cryptid, right? <laughs> I mean, even though they think it really exists, I mean, why not? But the Megalodon definitely gets an honorable mention. Now, there are a couple other cool uh, cryptids that I think that the 2B documentary also uh, kind of lined up with uh, was the Jabafofi, which is like a giant uh, spider which, I mean, I think that we could see that being real, right? I mean, I've seen some giant spiders in my own backyard. I'm not I'm not thinking that a, a giant spider is out of the realm of being possible. <laughs> but, you know, there are other creepy things like zombies. And um, there are so many cool cryptids. The Jersey Devil, uh, the Mothman. Now, while I, I'm not really terrified of the Mothman, there is just a really cool story about, you know, a flying man that we just don't know what it is. Is it a genetic mutation? Is it a human? Is it is it some kind of monster? We don't know. But I, I'm here for the stories and I love it. But yeah, so those are my favorite, my personal favorites of the scary monsters. Definitely the Kraken slash giant squid, hands down 100%. The Mongolian death worm, hell yeah, we love it. I'm here for creepy worms that spit venom and electrify people. <laughs> like how cool is that? You can't, you can't come up with something cooler, right? Um, but like I said, if you'd like to hear more about some of the scariest monsters and cryptids in the world, definitely go watch the Tubi documentary. I think it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to talk about all the, the creepy monsters of the world. It's a lot of fun to sit here and talk about the Mongolian death worm and just theorize what the heck it could be if it exists, if, it, if it's just uh, someone seeing a random snake and just, you know, thinks it's something deadly. I don't, you know, I think that's what's kind of fun about cryptids is that you can kind of come up with your own theories because, you know, why not? And I think that's what's also great about Bigfoot stuff is that you can kind of come up with your own theories and nothing's wrong. So like, why not? Like, have fun with it. 
So I hope you all are having a great Halloween season so far. I will definitely say go watch some creepy, scary movies. Uh, there's tons of good stuff on Shudder, tons of good stuff on Tubi right now. Uh, my personal favorites are like Hell House LLC. I love those. There's a new VHS 85 out if you like the VHS movies. I love those types of movies personally. I think they're so fun. I like when they tell little stories. It's like trick or treat. I love when they tell little stories and they all come together. Oh, give me more of those. Um, and then don't forget, uh, a Gettysburg haunting will be coming out in 2024. If, uh, you aren't familiar with that, that is a movie that is by Gabe Braxton. He's the writer director and it is done by Wolf Shoulder Films, which is a production company. And I am actually going to be playing the ghoul in it. Uh, and I'm very excited to play, uh, Nurse Jane. I think it's going to be really, really fun. Y'all know that any chance I get to be a ghoul or a little weirdo, I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. So it's just my favorite. I like I like being a creep and a little creepy ghoul gremlin in the background. So I appreciate all the love and support uh, that you guys had over that at New York Comic Con too. It was an amazing time. But yeah, so coming up for the next episodes, I will have my haunted Boston episode from my amazing, creepy and wonderful trip to Boston. I also will be uh, having some amazing guests on like uh, Elite Online Mag. For those of you who have followed my modeling over the years, my cosplay, my pinup and boudoir, I have known Elite for almost a decade now. Oh my gosh, it probably has been a decade now. <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> Thank you for dealing with me. Um, but I will be having uh, him on to talk about some Scottish and English English ghosts coming soon. I'm very excited about that because, you know, there's a lot of fun history in Europe and that is one of the things I'd love to dive more into is some of the lore and uh, legends and um, creatures of Europe. So that is the hope going forward is to have some cool European ghosts and folklore and uh, legends on. So I'm excited for that. And other than that, I hope everybody has the best Halloween. Eat all of the candy, eat all of the goodies. I am here for treats and no tricks. <laughs> so let's hope that you have an amazing Halloween season too. And uh, I hope that you had a great time listening to, you know, me nerd out over the Mongolian deathworm and the Kraken because to me, those are two of the coolest cryptids that I have, I think, in my, like, research have ever encountered and I just think that they're really cool and they're gnarly and I definitely don't want to come in contact with them but I definitely like talking about them so thanks again everybody I hope you have a great day don't forget to check out campcryptidpod.com if you want to check out all of the socials all of the the YouTube I think everything's on there if you have a story that you'd like to submit for campfire tales uh so Basically, Campfire Tales, if you aren't familiar, I go through and I read stories and experiences that you all as listeners have, and I just go through and read them, and we have fun, like, kind of figuring out what the heck it could have been, or if it's, like, unsolved, if we're like, oh, yep, that's a ghost. <laughs> but yeah, head over to campcryptedpod.com. You can find the contact section and everything there. I'll definitely make sure that I post all of the um, different little literature from today's episode in the Reddit. Uh, I always like to post that supplemental stuff so you guys can check it out and just kind of dive, do it, do, do a deep dive of yourself, like doing everything. So it's really fun. And then, um, like I said, have an amazing rest of your Halloween. I hope you have the best Halloween and thanks again for listening. I really appreciate everyone hanging out and, and talking about all the monsters of the world with me because this is just the coolest. <laughs> So yeah, thanks again, campers. I hope you guys have an amazing Halloween season. And until next time, have a great day.